So even if you're like me, a performing arts major, you will have to make things like this, okay? All right? Hey everybody, I hope all of you have been doing well. My name is Isis, and if you didn't already know, I am a student at the Savannah College of Art and Design. I'm currently in my spring quarter, which means I'm in the final quarter since I'm not doing summer classes, but summer vacation is on the horizon. But currently it is April, which is commitment season for a lot of people and when they're figuring out what college is right for them. And because of this, I thought that I would make a video about SCAD and help people that are potentially looking at coming here next year. Now, even if you're not on the fence and you know you're gonna come to SCAD or you're not going to SCAD, but you're still gonna be a freshman next year. There's still plenty of tips for you. Don't worry I've broken this down to 10 tips for a freshman year in general 10 tips about Savannah specifically and then 10 tips about SCAD and what life is like here So jumping right into freshman year advice the biggest thing that I have learned since being in college is Professors don't care. I know that sounds really scary and negative But what I mean by that is professors are not going to take their time to make sure that you're all caught up and baby you in the class. Even when you're a senior in high school, teachers go the extra mile to make sure that all of their students are caught up. But in college, if you're falling behind, if you're not putting the work in, your professor is gonna move on without you and ultimately you are gonna take the blame for that. They will help you if you ask for it. They're just not gonna go out of their way to overwhelm you with extra help. Second, this is a huge one. You need to schedule time away from the dorm. When you're in high school, you go to school during the day and then you come back home and you can fully unwind yourself. Your home is not affiliated with the school in any way. When you are in a dorm, you go to school during the day and then you come to a living situation that is still technically a school environment. It's a very interesting thing to get used to. It can be very easy to stay trapped in an environment where you're always doing homework in the dorm and even when you're relaxing, you're staying in your room and then before you know it, you have extreme cabin fever. I would say at a minimum, you need to schedule half a day a week just for you to get out, do some shopping, eat at a restaurant. Otherwise, you're gonna feel like your entire existence is school and that won't be good for you. In addition to physically leaving the dorm, you should also have some sort of personal outlet, something that you can work on besides homework. And this can mean a lot of different things, but for myself, making YouTube videos is my own personal outlet. Number four is always be looking ahead. There is nothing worse than getting slammed with a giant stack of homework that you physically cannot complete in time. If you look ahead, you'll know that that's coming, so you will be able to adjust your schedule accordingly or even try to get ahead in certain classes. Number five, and this really depends on the person, but I would really encourage, especially especially in the first few weeks of school to be as social as possible. You have a really good chance at meeting friends by exchanging your interests, exchanging Instagrams. Oh, I met you yesterday, now you're in my class, let's talk after class, all of that. Number six, and I should take this advice as well, <laughs> don't overpack. I would say when you're coming to college, try to bring as little stuff as possible, and then when you go back for like Thanksgiving or Christmas break, then you can bring other things, but for the most part, you're not gonna need a bunch of stuff and once you're settled in then you'll kind of figure out oh I should get this I should get that which oftentimes you can just buy here or you can have like a family member ship it to you and number seven another thing with having too many things is do not buy the supplies until they are absolutely essential and you must need them I was not doing this until this quarter the amount of textbooks I purchased that were never used supplies that were never used you have a reading due then go buy the book. If it's just in the syllabus, I would wait. This is gonna save you a lot of money, but it's also just going to alleviate a stack of books or a stack of art supplies that you're never gonna touch. Number eight, it's just a class. Do the best that you can. Freshman year, you're gonna have to take a lot of classes that you're not thrilled about. Do your best effort get through it, just make sure that you pass. Do not stress yourself out to perfection because you're adjusting to your new workload, but you're also adjusting to a whole new living environment. So there's a lot of adjustment happening. Take it one breath at a time. Do not overly stress yourself out. Number nine, you are going to compare yourself to literally everyone, especially the people that have the same major as you. How long have they been doing this? Are they more qualified than me? Am I more qualified than them? Everyone's doing it. You have to remind yourself, I got into this college, I am here studying this, I am capable of doing this. And once you start telling yourself those things, 
that fear and comparison is slightly gonna go away. I think it'll always be there a little bit, but that's life. You'll really have to start instilling some confidence in yourself in order to actually be successful. Number 10 is always take advantage of those extra resources. If your college provides certain subscriptions, if your college provides transportation, if your college has extra help sessions, all those extra free things designed for students, use them. One, it's gonna save you money, and two, they're there to help you out, especially classroom resources from your professors. If you go to extra study sessions or do the extra credit, whatever it might be, your professor is going to know this is a good student and your performance is going to improve dramatically. Those are all of my general freshman tips. So now let's start talking about the city of Savannah, Georgia. So yeah, if you're not going to school in Savannah, Georgia, uh, you can leave. This is for the SCAD kids only, okay? The first thing I noticed about the South, literally right as I got off the plane, the manners of the South, they're extremely polite here, always saying please and thank you, ma'am, sir, calling you like baby. It's just like so loving and everyone's extremely friendly. If for whatever reason, if you yourself do not identify as an overly positive person, just get ready for a bubble of positivity being around you at pretty much any place you go. The other thing about Savannah is you're gonna have to get used to tourists. There are always trolleys going by, ghost tours, people with their cameras out taking pictures of everything, bachelor and bachelorette parties, lots of weddings. It's very busy. You'll see a bunch of different types of people. So sometimes you'll have to think about crowds and stuff. Like if you go downtown over the weekend, there's gonna be a lot more people. We are the second largest St. Patrick's Day celebration in the country and it gets very, very busy here. So every once in a while, you're gonna have to pay attention to the crowds. In addition to it being very touristy, there's also a huge nightlife scene here. There are plenty of nightclubs and even certain tours that run in the evenings because you think, oh, it's gonna be busy in the day. It doesn't always guarantee that at night it's gonna be free. Also, most places close at night and then reopen with the nightclub atmosphere. And Savannah is an open container city, so it's very common that you'll see people just walking around drinking. It, it's not just in a bar, like it spreads out onto the street as well. But because of its nighttime scene and because it's a touristy place, please have some sort of protection with you when you're walking around around downtown. I always carry my mace with me just because there are so many people here at pretty much any given moment. Another thing that you should be weary of is Savannah has terrible drivers because there's a lot of college people from a bunch of different places and oh that's right, tourist place, a lot of different drivers from another group of different places, a lot of different styles of driving, a lot of laws that end up changing. People speed, People run red lights. People do not wait for you at the crosswalk. In fact, I know multiple people now that have gotten hit since their time being in Savannah. As you are crossing the street, always be looking both ways religiously because the drivers are not paying attention. It's, it's garbage. Be careful. Number 16, Savannah is old. So old, in fact, that a lot of the sidewalks and streets are made of cobblestone. Totally unwalkable in the road. Get shoes that you can walk in. I myself love an impractical high heel, but you will not live. Now I did want to touch on Savannah's weather. For the most part, it is warm and sunny here year round. In the winter, it did get relatively cold. I think the coldest it got was probably 45 degrees in the middle of the day. If you're from the south, you're probably already familiar with it, but we also do experience a lot of humidity here. Sudden rainstorms and thunderstorms are something to look out for. And there are hurricanes that do come through here. I remember it was my first month in Savannah and we did have a hurricane warning. It ended up missing us, but a lot of people from SCAD ended up evacuating. If it does get really bad, I think SCAD will evacuate you. That is something that definitely happens here. Well, it might be commonplace for you Southerners. If you're not from the South, please bring some bug spray because I was getting eaten alive and sunscreen, which you should be wearing anyway, but since it is sunny year round, having that sunscreen is gonna help you so you don't get burnt. Number 19 is while 
Savannah is a city, it really does have a small town feel. Once you've been here and once you've passed like, oh, I'm done discovering and exploring the city, it's like, oh, I don't need to do that touristy thing anymore. I just want to do like regular activities. Savannah itself is kind of like its own little cutesy bubble. It's a lot of fun, but sometimes you do feel a little trapped. Try to find some time outside of the city as well, if you can. And the last thing I'll say about Savannah, and I know this is more of like a personal thing, but my vegetarian and vegan friends, there's a lot of steakhouses and fish houses. Is that fish house? I don't know. What I'm trying to say is vegetarian and vegan options are much more limited, especially where I come from. I'm from the West Coast, so like it's everywhere. It's not impossible. It's just meat is kind of the thing here. But there are a few places that I would say have pretty good vegan food. All right, now the moment we're all waiting for my last 10 tips specific to life at SCAD. So the first thing we have to talk about is classes. So you will have three classes per quarter, except for your first quarter where you will have four classes. That fourth class will be your first year experience and it's just gonna teach you a little bit about how to navigate SCAD, but it's very simple. Excluding first year experience, each class is two and a half hours and your professors will give you a 15 minute break within that session. Classes go from Monday to Thursday, but they meet twice a week, so you'll either have a Monday, Wednesday class or a Tuesday, Thursday class. If you didn't figure it out already, yes, we have three day weekends every weekend. Hooray, I know, so much time off, except not really because you'll be doing a lot of homework. And that transitions beautifully into my next thing is just because it's art school, it does not mean it's easy. I just have to say this because SCAD has something like a over 50% dropout rate for freshmen because a lot of people come here thinking, oh, it's gonna be so easy, it's just art school. School. You know, I do a little paint, I do a little I, a little sculpture, ooh la la. You're gonna have to put a lot of work in. It's still a very rigorous course load, and your professors are gonna be hard on you regardless if it's an arts class or an academics-based class. If you want an easy load, I'll say it now, SCAD is not the best fit for you. If you want an easy load, maybe go to a party school, which brings me to my point, no. SCAD is not a party school. And yes, I just talked about how Savannah has a great night scene and that there are clubs that let you in if you're 18. However, people don't go out that much and we definitely don't have any like house parties or dorm parties. Those are very, very rare. We don't have sororities or frats or anything like that. So for the most part, we're just studying. For fun, it's like, let's go to a coffee shop. That's the kind of vibe it is here. This one is very important to know, especially if you're not able to visit SCAD before coming here. I, for example, was not able to visit SCAD before coming here. I only did the online tour. The campus is so spread out. As opposed to certain universities and stuff where it's like, oh yeah, within like, so many blocks, like all of the academic buildings lie. No, here you'll have some on one side of town and then you'll have some on the completely other side of town. There are a lot of buses that help with transportation, but this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. You're gonna be walking a lot. Some people even get a bike to help the commute get easier. The campus really is downtown Savannah. Next, all freshmen are required to be on the meal plan. A lot of people complain about the meal plan. I've complained about being on the meal plan as a vegetarian because of like lack of really great vegetarian options. The food is fine. I would just recommend having other snacks in your dorm or something because it can be very repetitive eating the same thing over and over again. But do know you don't have to stick to the freshman dining hall at the Hive in the Turner area. I would highly recommend just a few blocks away from the freshman housing. There is a dorm called Oglethorpe House and in there, that is my favorite dining hall. They have very good food. Number 26, SCAD is huge and sometimes it makes it feel like there isn't this sense of togetherness at the school. What I mean by that is sometimes there will be events happening for other majors, but you don't really hear about it because you're in your own department. There's just, there's so much going on. There's very few things that all students participate in. There are both pros and cons to this, but that is what happens when you go to a large school. And that leads me into my next point where there are plenty of events happening at all times and you get to pick which ones you get to go to. There are also these things called extended learning opportunities. And for the most part, it's required that you do three per quarter per class. Not every professor requires it, but most likely you will have at least one that does. These are things like famous artists coming and talking to you or workshops and just things like that. This is another reason why we have those three-day weekends is just because you're not in class, there are plenty of things you can still be doing to enrich yourself 
outside of class time. Number 28, your professors are professionals. Which like, yeah, no duh, they're professor, they have a degree, like I trust them. For your major especially, like my major, I'm a performing arts major, my professors are actors. My professors have been on set. They actually have experience in the field. All of the professors here have insane credentials and that is one of the reasons why I love this school. Ooh, I love this one. You as a freshman have rights. Just because you're a freshman does not mean you're going to get discredited or put down or not allowed to do things. Everyone has the chance to do something here and there's no weird gatekeeping. There's a little bit, I guess I would say, just being like, oh, you're a freshman, like you must, you know, be a little bit more inexperienced or you probably are adjusting, but for the most part, you can do whatever you want. Nothing's holding you back. And my last tip about being a freshman at SCAD is don't be discouraged about not being in your major classes right away because you won't be. Everyone has to do the foundational courses, even if you do get into a class pertaining to your major, you might not love it right away and that's okay because all of this stuff is just so entry level. You could be so advanced and you're hearing this and you're like, do I really have to learn about this? I know so much. Or you'll have to take a class that has nothing to do with your major, but it's just required to be at SCAD. So even if you're like me, performing arts major, you will have to make things like this, okay? All right, am I a little salty about it? Yeah, but I'm getting through it, so. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, those are my 30 tips for your freshman year at SCAD. Be sure to comment down below if you are coming to SCAD next year or if you're thinking about coming to SCAD next year and if, you know, I bless you with my words of wisdom because obviously I'm the most qualified person to be talking about this. Yeah. Anyway, be sure to subscribe for more videos that I make in the future and I will see you all next time. Have a magical day. Mm -hmm.